Okay, so this is a uh, kidney nephron feedback and this is uh, Max piece. Mac, this is looking really pretty nice. Um, we got some fun stuff going on in here. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. I'm curious about uh, this. I'm going to brush here actually. I'm curious about these. Um, Let's actually try drawing on the correct layer. I'm curious about these right here, uh, where these textures come over. Uh, let's get rid of those. Um, unless you like found some specific reference that shows that. I don't believe that that's correct. Uh, most of the other stuff you have going on in here looks really good. Um, be careful on things like the... Um, pelvis and the ureter about the wall thickness of keeping the wall thickness uh, more consistent because that's just what it's going to be then um, that's looking really good a uh, couple things when we get back in here to the um, nephron <coughs> um, again some cool stuff uh, I like the texture on here um, this is going to show right here. This is going to need to go straight through. So if we just come in here and I should just be able to just try drawing the correct layer again. Uh, okay, go ahead, rasterize it. And get rid of that. That's going to make more sense. Um, And then where this blood vessel comes in here, <coughs> if we zoom right in on this, um, I think I would just like to see that a little more defined as in, um, I don't know what my problem is today. As in this blood vessel that comes in, um, and then if you want to split it off, it gets if it wants to get smaller. Right now, the way that this is drawn, um, oh hell. right now, the way this is drawn, it looks as if the blood vessel comes in and then the blood vessel goes like this and that it splays out on the inside, if you kind of follow me, instead of the blood vessel comes in and splits into these two kind of smaller um, tubes. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. What I'm saying is that the blood is going to come, it's going to split like this and go into these small units. Right now it looks like it looks like it's just filling in this whole thing. So I hope that that makes sense. And then the other thing is that uh, where the afferent arterial comes out, you want to keep that, it's thinner, this is a thicker one, the afferent, um, A-F-F-E-R, this was, this is spelled wrong, afferent arterial comes in as thicker than the efferent arterial is thinner as it comes out, but it's consistent, so it's thinner as it comes out, but it's going to stay consistent as it goes. It's not going to get um, real thin and then thicken up like that. So just again with these blood vessels, just watch for thickness, um, the consistency in those. I know it's kind of a, I know it's kind of a pain. Um, I'll show you uh, <coughs> a quick trick that I showed a student earlier. Um, is no, I don't want to delete. I wanted to add. If we come in here and uh, let's just take a brush. Um, let's, let's pick 100% black, uh, let's say, for nib, um, and 
Let's make a blood vessel. It's not, it's, you know, you get the point, it's not good. Um, airbrush pencils, let's go to, uh, imported, where's my specialty? Here they are. I, sh I have a blood vessel taper brush in here somewhere. There it is. Blood Vessel Taper Brush. This should be in my brush set. This is a neat brush. As you push down, it will gently taper out into make it a little blood vessel for you. Um, so that can be kind of a fun one to play with. And then if you come in here to the, um, uh, let's see, window brush settings. Homer brush settings over here. And if I change, let's see, what am I going to change here? Shape dynamics, maybe? Yeah, here it is. Uh, the controlled fade, let's make this 300. Um, and then that's going to control how quickly it tapers. So for shorter ones, um, you can just change this value. And they'll taper off quicker. So it kind of depends on you know, what you're doing. Look at that. Oh, that's neat. Isn't that cool? All right, so that's neat. Um, <coughs> but that's the blood vessel taper brush. That's in uh, my brush set that I have made available. It should be on Moodle somewhere. It's probably in this project. But so what we're going to do, and then just because I get uptight about it, let's get rid of that. I'm going to get my eraser again. Where the heck are you? I had this little blurb here. It was making me crazy just to look at it. Did not make life better. Anyhow, we're going to leave it alone. Um, okay, so we're here. If we then go to Control U, which gets me to hue and saturation. So Control U or probably Command U on a Mac. And I'm just going to turn this white. And you can't see it now because it's on a white background, right? Um, let me throw another color in here. There, now you can see it. There it is. All right, and then what I'm going to do <coughs> is I'm going to go here and double click on it. And I can do a couple things. Um, when you're drawing these really tiny, getting the line is on there can be tough. I can now put a stroke on it. Um, I can click on stroke and I can come in here and I can uh, color the stroke whatever color I want. So we'll try to see if we can get here and match yours. Uh, it's okay, it's not, not as good. Um, and then I can come in here and I can say uh, color overlay and I want my blood vessels uh, are going to be, not that red, they're going to be red. Whoops, I'm in stroke still. Let's go to color overlay. Don't want them quite like that. Turn down a little bit. I don't like to get my stuff too bright. Say okay. And then you can come in here and go to a bevel and emboss. Um, set my light source. I'm going to put mine to the top left. And inner bevel. Size. There we go. Softness is how soft it is. Obviously how soft it is. And let me go back to stroke. I'm just going to make the stroke black for now so you guys can see it. There we go. And you can change the you know, one or two pixels, however fat you want the stroke to be. Um, I'm going to make it uh, a little bit bigger because I'm going to reduce this here. Well, no, they'll go down when they go down. Okay. And then let's take this and we can transform. And 
And now when I go in here, you can see I've been able to make some really fine blood vessels um, with a lot of interesting detail with a bevel um, filled with color and with a black stroke outline. And I can come in here at any point um, and I can change any of this. I can, you know, uh, make that two pixels on the stroke, which is way too big of what I have right there. We're going to stay with one pixel. Um, I can go to the bevel and emboss, and now that it's smaller, I can change the size a little bit, uh, the softness, whatever I want. And there, I just made blood vessels really quickly. Um, let me move, I'll move something so you can see it. There they are. These transform. Okay. And there you can see uh, this. That one's not very good. I'm just going to go ahead and erase that because I hate looking at it. Um, that one looks like crap. Uh, but you can see that, that how nice that works out real quick and it's just a real quick easy way and even if you're doing just flat color uh, you just go in here and you turn the bevel and emboss off and now I've still got my um, stroke with my outline uh, right there it's a pixel problem people there it is okay so um, just a couple things to check out on that Mac. Otherwise, it looks really cool. I love the idea that you're doing this interactive piece. Um, the other thing that we want to do on here is uh, with the, come on you beast, where's the behavior, there it is. Um, the leaders, uh, let's take this. And put it right on that line. Gee whiz, I am all thumbs today. Let's see if these are spaced out right. What in the holy hell are your names? There we go. Jeez. Sorry, pardon my language. I apologize if I've offended anyone's religion. I did not set out to do that. And then we'll come back in here. No, that was just good. So you get the idea. Um, and then what we're looking for is to get these um, the text uh, right on the same line as the um, fifty percent pin here. The text right on the same line as the leader line. That all this stuff just kind of, oops, I missed one up there, so that this <laughs> will sit right on that line just like these do. Um, if you can see how that all lines up there. Okay, so I just drew all over you a very fine little piece of art. <laughs> um, but other, it's looking good otherwise. Um, I, you got some interesting things going on in here. And um, again, you know, just consistency and thickness. We have thin spots, we have thick spots, um, just uh, we have like real thick here and this one is real thin. These structures are all going to be um, a similar thickness, so this and this uh, and this, sh these and these, this should all be very similar in thickness. They shouldn't have a lot of fluctuation and size change. The collecting duct is of course going to be bigger and that's fine, but um, again I'm really excited to see how you're um, interactive. Uh, piece works out on this. So uh, I hope that um, those tips help.
Okay, this piece here is um, Zeely's piece. Uh, again, we've got some um, good stuff going on in here. Let me give you some um, tips to uh, let's try to improve it a little bit. Um, first thing and very easy to fix is that uh, the text needs to line up with the um, leader lines. That one was just off just a little bit. That one. That. And then, then at the same time in here, we also have another problem in that um, these don't line up uh, with the text on top. Let me just get rid of that. Let me just get a brush. Oh, no pixels are selected, I hear you. We need to get all feisty about it. Is that um, if we go with the brush here and I start here, uh, this hadn't lined up and then this one is, there's a gap here. So these, um, these are just things you need to clean up. Uh, the way all these butt up against each other. And again, this distal convoluted tubule um, you want the last line of text against that you're going to want to lift this up so the leader what you want the leader line is to come right off of the bottom of the text like this on each of these okay um, i would try to avoid these like jagged um, lines here if there's a way that you could do it a real easy way to do it would be to continue this loop of Henley down here a little further where it would belong anyhow and then you can just line from here and this is uh, this is the descending limb you got it right here the descending tubule this is the um, loop of Henley loop of Henley that's this right here do not do it like that <laughs> uh, Vesa recta that's fine um, the other thing is the renal vein and renal artery um, there's no reason let me get some of that out of there for a second I saw where that was there's no reason that this couldn't cut off here and the renal vein could come here uh, what do we do let's do this So that the renal vein couldn't be labeled like uh, here, so renal vein, and then here, um, renal artery. This would be the text right here, renal artery, renal vein. Um, and then you could get rid of this kind of thing. Anything that like makes people do an extra bit of thinking to have to understand the labels, it's not something you want. Um, Proximal convoluted tubule. I would probably do the proximal convoluted tubule here and the glomerulus. Um, you got it, you got it labeled right here already, so you don't need that label and you can move that label. So you don't need those on top. Um, what else, what else? All right, that was a quick stroll down. <sighs> the label land. Um, I'm guessing that this section right here looks like it came from here. Um, let's make this a dashed line instead of a solid black outline all the way around that. And then come back in here where you cut it out and make this a dashed line that matches it to show us where you got it from. Um, some people will go like this with an arrow. It's probably pretty self-explanatory, so I don't think you really need to do that, but I've seen it a lot. And then um, I'm guessing from having seen your other work 
that you're just not finished illustrating in here. So I'm not going to give you a ton of feedback. Anatomically, it looks pretty good. Uh, renal pelvis, renal artery, ureter. Um, looks like all that's good. Uh, it just looks like you're just kind of still finishing up the illustration. So um, there's uh, some feedback for you. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Oh, um, here's a, another tip. These ends here, these would keep going. So typically in medical illustration, to show that something is going to keep going like that, um, we would just kind of leave it open and soften the fade at the end or something like that. I know you've got that. I wonder if I can fix that with the quick healing brush or not. Nope. That didn't work at all. Um, should have done it with the gray to begin with. You just come in here. There we go. You just come in here and kind of fade those off. And the same here. And that shows that uh, it, it continues. It just keeps going. So we don't, instead, let's not put, a, we won't put a stop there. We'll just let those keep going. Same uh, here is true with the blood vessels. That at the ends, we're just going to let the ends uh, fade off to show that they continue on. And we know they continue on. And people understand that they continue on. Then, let's see. Uh, we won't get into that right now. I think that's good. Um, okay. Uh, I'm a little confused what's going on. Let's see, now that I get into it, I'm a little confused what's going on right here. That doesn't make any sense at all. Um, if this blood vessel comes in front, it comes in front. That's cool. And then let's have this, like, have the other one uh, go behind. Why not? Uh, make it kind of interesting and then this red can like you had done can kind of continue and let that fade uh, into the, the blue. That's blue and let that fade into the purple and, um, the same with these the way these are crossing here with the line stopping it just doesn't make a lot of sense um, I see what you did you just kind of have an outline line back there uh, let's see where it goes. I kind of would like to see that um, blood vessel line continue on. If you want to, with the whole thing, have a thicker line outlining the whole piece for some reason. I, I, you know, that can be a really cool look. A lot of medical legal people do it. Actually, it's a pretty common um, technique. Uh, it could be something you could try if you wanted to. But I would, you know, get these blood vessels having their own, um, let the line go across all the way as it should. However you decide to do it. But, you know, kind of that idea a little bit more. And I think I'm done uh, with that piece picking at you. All right. Okay, this is um, Chandler's piece, and um, I uh, wish I'd talked to you in person about this today. Um, I'm not exactly sure where you're at in this process right now. It looks super sketchy. Um, I'm not sure if it's uh, still an underpainting, if this is a sketch. I didn't want to not give you feedback um, based on what we're looking at. Um, some of the stuff I gave you feedback on last week about the proportion issues in here that, um, uh, so again, I'm, I'm not real sure kind of where you're going or what you're doing with this. Um, Hmm. 
some of the th I will I'll just give you some feedback on what I'm looking at here because that's really about all I can do. Some of the things that I find a one a couple things I find not working in this verse. Um, the background, okay, and it's like the background. What the hell are you talking about? Yeah, the background. If you're gonna, um, I know scientific illustration isn't what you see in your future right now, and that's totally cool. Um, but you're gonna need to uh, learn to paint these on white um, because uh, a book editor or somebody is gonna want to be able to come in and cut this out and get this background out of here. Um, they're going to want to remove all that looks kind of cool with that white around it honestly um they're going to want to come in here and get rid of all this colored background they don't want it it's going in a textbook and that was part of our assignment brief is that we're putting these in a textbook right um so we're going to start playing with your art and this you know is an interesting idea too where you might consider how you can mix um digital and traditional maybe you paint them traditional and then you bring them into a program like Photoshop and you uh, clean them up you do some more work on them whatever um, and we throw let's throw some white back here and see you know see what we're looking at and I think your colors really kind of start to pop if you like to paint against a gray or a you know a cream or some kind of more neutral background not just a white background um, get a white board and then uh, put down your sketch and then lay down a gray or a cream or a brown or whatever color you want in your background just within those areas and you can use some masking film if you're doing watercolor um, and mask some of those things off uh, want to see what this is all gonna I think once we see this on white I think it's gonna pop just a little quite a bit and get the yeah see how that really stands out now once you get a lot of that brown but you could paint you could put it on a whiteboard put down a cream and then build up your colors on top of it um, and then when we go in here with ideas like uh, um, you know, some way to come in here and get these, oh, that's not the right color, get these nice, um, get some highlights, specular highlights in here, like things are wet. Uh, and you could mix um, some of this traditional and digital. Uh, <laughs> I had played around for a while with calling my company Tradigital Illustration, T-R-A-D-I-G-I-T-A-L, because uh, it was traditional and digital together because I used to do it all in graphite and then paint it. Um, and uh, no one could pronounce it. <laughs> no, one could, no one could spell it. It was just a pain in the ass. Um, but I, there is a natural science illustrator now who teaches a class called Tradigital Illustration, and it's uh, traditional digital illustration together it's just kind of funny um, but things like this so you have this blood vessel that comes in here and it goes from really thick and then it just kind of comes down to like boom, it instantly drops off to nothing and they just don't do that they're gonna go back to the very first video and you'll see you know blood vessels are gonna they're gonna taper gently and if they do when they do split they're gonna split in a way that the same that the volume can comfortably make that transition okay so as this comes down there's your capillaries um, so you know this if you have it this thick going in it would probably need to not be quite that thick going in and then it needs to equally split off so that you can see that now that makes a little more sense right there it needs to equally split off and then this could come around and then this one could start to split off here so if we get uh, a red get something red in here that's not red uh, that you are not red either what the heck you're 
we get some red in here you'll see this kind of splits off here and this one kind of splits off here and then they go into this one which comes up and then this is going to split as well and however it goes um, and it's not saying that this blue this vein can't come in front like you had it it sure can it's just you know you just got to make logical logical splits and changes as you go um, this is nice this line work here that you have um, and again it's just going to be working on uh, working on that color bringing that color up into something that um, not like that but you get the idea that um, bringing this color into something that's a little more identifiable as uh, what we are anatomically used to seeing and these colors help us differentiate the anatomical structures within the picture so in those areas where it gets really really muddy um, that does not help us to distinguish the anatomy uh, the other thing and we had talked about this you and I is that here yes please work jeez that's going to need to be down like that get the idea um. <laughs> so if we um And then looking at, and you know, I don't care if you want to include this whole urinary system in here. I think that would be excellent and cool. And uh, no one has done it before in this class. And I'm always for uh, new and interesting things that people have not done. Um, I'm also all about just answering the brief if that's where you're at with things. So we'll get you there. Um, The ureter is going to, the bladder is not going to be really quite so asymmetrical as you had here. Um, and it's going to come off. It's kind of a thinner kind of beast. So something like that but again don't limit don't let the paper limit you um, and it, I would start with white build up your grays if that's what you want to paint on etc etc I've already mentioned it all um, this right here whoops I'm just I, that's good let's do that let's just go and get rid of that guy uh, what else what else what else I mean, yeah, it's not going to come, if it did come off, it would come off way up in there, so, yeah. Let's just get rid of them. Uh, 
Um, trying to think. I can think of any other pictures. Oh, weird. <laughs> uh, fun. Okay. Um, Did not really help. Of course, of course, it did not help. But just want to see what it would do. Um, that is all the feedback I have. Uh, I talked to four people in class about their pieces, and they looked really, really nice. And these are the only pieces in the submission folder that uh, looked newer. Um, I didn't give feedback on stuff I had already given detailed feedback on about in person a week or so ago. But um, if you, uh, I hope you guys watched from the beginning. There's a couple of cool tips on the blood vessel taper brush. See you Wednesday. <laughs>